Hey there and welcome in. Strap in, buckle up, this is going to be a little bit different. Uh, you're going to evaluate me. Uh, so what is this about? Um, we are all, or maybe not all, but most of us are nerds in the Linux community, in free software community in general. Uh, you know, when you're not a typical Windows user, you are usually uh, in this uh, out of your passion, right? And a lot of times the whole Linux community is being called out for not being very welcoming of new users and like this is a problem for growing the Linux community and because of the actually uh, people uh, there are less uh, newcomers coming and they are feeling re repulsed uh, or anything in that context right so what happened uh, today is that uh, I was actually going to record a completely different video uh, but one of my dear friends uh, who is a uh, normal computer user uh, he reached out to me and said that he ditched windows uh, in a kind of a rage uh, moment um, well he has a weaker laptop as i understand it or a weaker computer and um, he couldn't handle the the bloatware on windows anymore so he switched to linux uh, in a very explosive kind of way and you know these kinds of people are usually very vulnerable. I'm, I apologize if my mic was too loud until now. Uh, what I mean by vulnerable is that people who explosively switch operating systems to something completely different such as Linux uh, are, they, they tend to co go back to, you know, th there is a, a fear of missing out. And I really don't mind people using whatever they uh, are most comfortable to use, right? Uh, but you know, when they come to me, I try to make it easier for them to be onboarded, to feel welcome, and not to be repulsed, like um, giving them an advice how to do things in the most difficult possible way and in the most complex possible way, which some Linux users tend to do. Uh, so this was uh, his question. Basically, I'm going to read the, all of it. Uh, to you. Uh, here it is. I am trying to figure out the recommended way of installing programs. So far I see apt install, downloading and opening a .deb file from the author, whatever snap is, whatever flatpak is. I'm just wondering, say you wanted to install Visual Studio Code or Discord, whatever app you may pick, what method would you prefer? What order of install methods would you look for for that app? Some of these look to be maintained by third parties. Would you download something like Microsoft Visual Studio Code from a store where the author shows as random person? Seems fishy to me. It was a lot easier to use Linux when it had no apps and a smiling emoji. I feel silly. I see you have a few Flatpak videos. I will start watching them now. Any others that you think I should prioritize watching? Okay, so that's the question. Uh, what I have asked him is uh, which distribution did he install and he went for Ubuntu and I asked uh, was it the latest one or the long-term support one. He picked the long-term support one and basically I agreed uh, with his choice as a um, you know, as a first distribution, it's one of the best ones that you can pretty much pick in my uh, humble opinion. So this is what I have answered to him and this is what I want you to evaluate. How did I perform as a person who is trying to help a person not to be repulsed from the whole Linux community and maybe he will stick around. This is my answer. Apt is a system package manager from Debian and Ubuntu is based on Debian. Generally, those packages are frozen on Ubuntu or Debian release and you don't get feature updates for them except security updates, which is good and bad at the same time, depending on what you expect from a certain program. For system application, it is generally preferable to pull them from Apt. 
Visual Studio Code, uh, I know for a fact that Microsoft prefers Canonical Snap Package Manager. And then I gave him a link to snapcraft.io slash code so he can see it and the screenshot where it says that the um, uh, Visual Studio Code is the uh, author of this package or uh, shall I say of the upload of this package. Uh, when you go to Snapcraft page and search for a package, you can clear, clearly see that it is not a random person who uploaded this package. This is how I do it. If there is no check mark, I do not download it. Snap is Canonical's containerized packaging, similar to what smartphones do with Google Play Store and Apple Play Store, uh, Apple App Store. All apps downloaded from there are confined. Snap is from Canonical and Ubuntu is from Canonical. Flat packs are the same thing, but not from Canonical. They are more open, have no just one store. Although in practice there is currently is just one store called FlatHub, which is operated by the GNOME Foundation. Canonical does not want flat packs on Ubuntu, so they did not include it in the GUI of their Ubuntu App Store. Uh, but nothing really stops you from in installing flat packs. You can do that with the command line. Every uh, every app on FlatHub has install command listed for your copy pasting pleasure, or you can install GNOME App Store on Ubuntu. That one can handle flat packs from FlatHub, but then you will have two GUIs for installing apps. Downloading a deb from the author's website is preferred if it exists. Uh, we call it native packages, while snaps and flat packs are containers. There is also app images. Those two are containers, but uh, those do not install at all. You should uh, download uh, a file and just run it. Everything is inside. Discord I recommend getting from FlatHub for two reasons. For experience, uh, it is official Discord package that auto updates. Uh, and the second one, uh, .deb file is from Discord website, although official, it does not auto-update. I have weak experience with Discord from Snap Store, but the Flatpak version runs perfectly fine. And then I give him a screenshot of a Discord application on the Snapcraft IO webpage, and I point a pointer to the Snapcrafters as an author of the package that was uploaded, and I write the following. This group of people called Snapcrafters are affiliated with the Snap Store in some ways, and their goal is to fill up the Snap Store with missing applications in the best way they can. So generally what they upload is safe, but they uh, give themselves uh, too much work, so sometimes uh, some things might not function 100% simply because this group of people does not have the capacity to test everything in every scenario. Uh, and then I give him a screenshot of the FlatHub page where Discord is marked as uploaded by Discord. Uh, dot com. So when you see the same app marked maintained by Snapcrafters on the Snap Store, uh, but uh, by the original author on the FlatHub, I would go for the FlatHub version if you don't mind doing that on Ubuntu. And by don't mind, I mean running this from the CLI. And there is a screenshot uh, that I gave him to how uh, the FlatHub gives you a copy paste command to install something if you're not using the GUI. Every other Linux distro, as in non-Ubuntu, uh, has GUI out of the box for flat packs, but Canonical has to push their snaps agenda. Also, he did not ask me about Steam, but I know that he plays games, so I also wrote to him, if you, if you plan on installing Steam, that one I would recommend getting directly from Valve's webpage as a deb, which will work the best. Both snap and flat, flat pack versions of Steam have certain game compatibility issues. And for the uh, finishing touch, I gave him a link to FlatHub to download a jump and bump game, uh, which I consider to be very fun uh, in a local co-op. So there you have it. This is a real deal. This happened literally today, this morning. Uh, this is an actual re real friend uh, and everything I read to you was the complete package, our whole well, I, I wouldn't really call it a conversation, it was mostly my monologue, uh, but in the end he just told me, uh, I'm gonna read you his answer actually. He said, I believe I installed Discord from FlatHub. I can't remember, but yes, I did install that on my system. Phew, 
lots of information, lots to play with. Thank you. So there you have it. Uh, please evaluate me, give me a score from 1 to 10, what do you think of my performance as a free software, uh, I, I wouldn't call myself self-evangelist. Actually I have taken a short break to think about how I really see myself in this Linux community and you know doing these YouTube videos and all of that. A lot of um, content creators have a somewhat high opinion of themselves and especially if you uh, type something like uh, Linux evangelist or something, it, it sounds a little bit uh, too much. What I see myself is, you know, when you enter a nice restaurant and there is a person who welcomes you in, opens the door for you, takes your coat and puts it in a safe place and brings you to your table. And after that, you're free to participate in the delicious meals uh, that the kitchen is going to pre prepare. And your part of uh, letting people in is finished. So th this is how I see myself as a person who opens doors and lets people in and takes their coats. I'm going to see you in the next video.